We are nearly a year and a half into this pandemic. No one could have foreseen the tremendous impact this virus would have on our social lives, mental health, and everyday freedoms we often took for granted. The interviews and stories that you are going to hear are from real people all around the world. Although each story is unique in many ways, they all share a common theme. They all share one of survival. These are the first-hand accounts of life in lockdown. These are the Quarantine Chronicles. Um, I was waiting for my luggage uh, at the airport and I just pulled my mask because I could not breathe. It was August, it was very humid and hot. And the security woman, a woman she came and she said to me in Turkish language that you should put up your mask or otherwise I'm going to find you one million dollars and like i was <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of money a million dollars to for not wearing a mask this is the quarantine chronicles hosted by justice hall all right so you you said you prefer to have your camera off uh, is there any problem? Uh, it, it's up to you. If you're more comfortable with the camera off, that's fine. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel comfortable, but if you want, I can switch it on. It, it's, it's about your comfort level. I, I want you to be comfortable. It's, yeah, just that, uh, it's just that I'm fasting and I just don't look too good. So that's why. Uh, yeah, I, I can. Just... Yeah, I can respect that. I can respect that. That's fine. Okay, thank you. No problem. So welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. Can you tell me uh, how to properly uh, pronounce your name? Is it Shazia or Shazia? Uh, no, it's neither of these two <laughs> pronunciations. <laughs> I was way off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how, how do you pronounce it? It's Shazia. Shazia. Okay. Yes, All right. Yes. So, so do you do you go by Shazia or do you go by a, a nickname or something like that? Um, you can call me Shaz. Shaz. Okay. All right. Yes. Well, welcome, Shaz. Okay. Can you uh, can you tell me where you're located, if you don't mind, uh, where you're located and what you do uh, for a living? Okay. Um, I am right now uh, located in Turkey, but basically I am from Pakistan and uh, I am a financial advisor. Uh, I make financial reports uh, and uh, I work as a calculator for my friends and family where to put in their investment <laughs> and how to take it out. But you're you're an to asset like to the family, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there, there needs to be one of you in, in every family. Financial literacy is <laughs> probably one of the most important things someone can learn because they don't really teach it in school. So absolutely, you know, yes. Yeah. Um, it was like I want my parents wanted me to become a doctor, but uh, uh, I could not get through the merit list um, and. Uh, I must say that accidentally or by luck, I got into accounting and economics. And then, you know, after I finished my studies, I did my majors in finance. I realized that that uh, I should have taken this subject uh, since childhood yeah. because, you know, <laughs> reason being that uh, coming to COVID, this pandemic, I feel that uh, we need to be more... Um, uh, in control of our finances yeah. and our savings and, uh, you know, anything and any time can happen in this 21st century. So, um, yeah. So I love my subject now more than I studied yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So this is, this has actually been uh, a God, well, not, I wouldn't say a godsend for you, but this is your studies and your major, you know, you're well prepared to be able to handle the, the hardship uh, especially financially coming exactly. into this this pandemic and everything so with you being in finances was it an easy transition to go 
from, I guess you were in an office at some point before the pandemic to, are you, are you still in the office or are you working from home? No, I'm working from home. Okay. Yes, uh, because of the pandemic, it's very difficult, uh, you know, uh, to uh, be among so many people in the office. Basically, uh, how it works in Pakistan is that uh, uh, we uh, work in a very big, I worked in a very big, large um, office uh, where there are many, many other uh, people coming, going. There were customers, clients. So it was tough to be uh, in contact with all of them, especially when this pandemic it uh, occurred. Nobody knew what to do, what SOPs to follow, and how to tackle the situation. Things were quite hard in the beginning. Even we didn't know what this corona um, uh, coronavirus meant. We were. I remember uh, last year I was sitting with my friends, and one of my friends she had influenza, and she said, "Do you know there is a, there is a virus uh, which has." Uh, a rise of the rat and the uh, combination of the rat and the snake soup. So we were like just taking it as a joke. We didn't know that it will get so serious and things will start moving towards such an awkward position. Yeah, I, I think most people were were of the same mind where when it first came about, I don't think anyone really took it seriously. No one expected it to balloon into what it is now. And I don't think anyone thought that it, we would be a year and a half in and still be trying to get this thing under control. So at, at what point would you say, did you start to take it more seriously? Um, soon after, I think it was uh, March, 2020, uh, that things got very tough for me in Pakistan because um, I visited uh, Turkey in January 2020 and I went back to my home in February. So at that time, little I knew that this thing will get so serious. Mm. But then the government started making announcements the death rates uh, were high, people were getting more affected. So I, I, I was really very panicked and uh, disturbed because I had some other plans. And I did not know that uh, God had made different plans for the whole planet. And then in March, I took it very seriously. And uh, I remember I was crying and in February, I was uh, doing, um, you know, steam um, in all my home in all of my home, in every room, in every nook and corner, uh, I was doing steam. And I, whenever we would go, go out to bring groceries, me and my children, we would take off our shoes and dip it in uh, sanitizers. Uh, we really didn't know yeah. what next minute will bring for us. It was very hard until, I think, until July. Uh, I was taking it very, very seriously. Then but afterwards I started calming myself and I decided uh, my faith should be more um, stronger than my fears. Mm. And I, I made myself strong through the faith that if, if God has destined for me uh, something that I cannot uh, help it, then I just should, you know, stay calm and not spread panic and uh, avoid going to many gatherings, yet be in touch with everyone and give them hope. Yeah, I think that's good. So you were you were leaning on your faith, you know, to to calm yourself, but you were also still taking precautions uh, that were being uh, advised by the government and the medical experts and stuff. Yes, I was not taking a lot of cautions, to be honest. Afterwards, not a lot of cautions. Hmm. Yes, but I made myself strong through my faith. Were you wearing the mask and, and socially distancing and stuff like that in public? 
you know, I tried initially to wear masks and keep social distance, but you know how it is in Pakistan. If you ask somebody not to visit you at your home because of the corona, they just really don't uh, <laughs> like this thing. <laughs> <laughs> like we have to socialize. We have to be around each other. We can't stay away. <laughs> Uh, so it's so in, in Pakistan, the communities are very uh, close knit. People uh, are yes, yes. You know the the maids and the the the, the people who come to your home for cleaning, cleaning and cooking and all that. I felt really sad for them because they lost their jobs, and I was the only one who was allowing them to come to my home. But yes, I asked. I used to ask them to wash their hands regularly and to put on the mask while inside my home. Uh, and I tried to help them in whatever resources I could because uh, I could feel they were really very depressed and some of them had large families and they had other uh, jobs being, uh, you know, uh, they were not allowed to go to the other houses. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, I was, as I said initially, I instead of becoming panicked, I gave them hope, I gave them courage, and I I focused all my strengths and potentials on such kind of people who who could learn in a little manner a positive thing from me. Yeah, well that's good. Being able to to share some positivity. So yes. you mentioned that you're you're in Turkey now. What uh when did you come? To, to stay? Are you here permanently? Or uh, how long have you been here in Turkey? Yes. And what's your, what it, how are things different here in Turkey than they were in Pakistan? Yeah, this is a very good question. Uh, as I said to you, uh, just before the corona started, I, I was in Turkey in January. I left back in February. I came here with a purpose because uh, uh, I really like the the historical uh, uh, places, with the, the the mosques, the museum. Uh, I love the Turkish food. I love Turkish people. So uh, I had decided long time ago that I will relocate to Istanbul. And um, but I was waiting for an appropriate time because my daughter she was doing her A levels, and uh, so I. Um, I was waiting for her to, you know, finish her studies and then move. But as God um, had decided something else, she still had one year to cover. Uh, she will be appearing for her A-level exams this year in Pakistan next month. Uh, but uh, when I went back last year, uh, the coronavirus started spreading. The schools were uh, shut down and... Um, I was, uh, as I said to you initially, I was very scared and I was, I was crying for some weeks actually and asking my God to, you know, finish this pandemic because I, w I just started living my life. I had uh, some very tough times in my past. Uh, I had health issues and which got very chronic. So I, I was planning to relocate to Turkey and spend uh, some peaceful time over here in this peaceful uh, environment uh, next to the Bosphorus uh, view and wanted to have long walks here, meet and greet new people from different cultures, yet uh, remaining in an Islamic country. Because somehow uh, um, it's like... Inside my heart, maybe from my looks, I look a uh, very modern sort of a woman, but uh, deep inside my heart, I, I'm very, very uh, close to my faith. And I always uh, believe in Allah that whatever uh, he bestows upon me is for some something that he's going to reward me uh, in my eternal life. That's why I decided to move to Istanbul and as luck would have taken it, when the schools got shut down and when things became uh, uh, very uh, indifferent for me in Pakistan and I then decided in July that no matter what, I am strong, my faith is strong and if Allah has written life for me, I will survive. If he has not written a long life for me, then nothing can stop it. So I... I came back again in August 2020 to Istanbul and I started to sing in the culture with the people as soon as I landed. 
because I have visited this country twice before. And I, I came here uh, with an open mind, with an open heart. And Alhamdulillah, I am so happy today that um, my God, he sent me to a very uh, nice community where the people are very loving, very caring. I use wheelchair most of the time. So I feel that when people stop and they try to help me, if there is something wrong with the wheelchair, I really appreciate this gesture. And okay. I also... Can I, can I ask a question real quick? So you say you're, you're in Istanbul, which has a lot of people. Uh, I think it was what, 14 million people in the, the province of Istanbul. How have you seen the life change during this, this past couple of months that you've been there? Are there still a lot of people going out, going to the stores, or is there curfew? What is, what is the day-to-day the -day life in Istanbul? The most important and the thing that I uh, really appreciate here in Istanbul is that they follow the SOPs quite strictly. Uh, I, uh, I find them sanitizing their hands. I find them uh, wearing masks in public transports. This is what I was not, uh, you know, unfortunately seeing in my own country, you know, because people are not very, very literate in my country. So when you stop them, caution them to wear a mask, they say, we don't see anybody suffering with corona uh, next to us. Why are you saying this to me? So there's a lot of so denial. Sorry. There, so there's a lot of denial of of the the dangers exactly. in Pakistan. Exactly, okay. there's a lot of denial of the dangers. Yes, exactly. But over here in Turkey, I found that people have a, uh, a lot of uh, acceptance that yes, this uh, thing exists, and you cannot just walk in anywhere in any office. You need to take an appointment, and you have to follow the SOPs. I remember the day I landed in uh, Istanbul. Um, I was waiting for my luggage uh, at the airport and I just pulled my mask because I could not breathe. It was August, it was very humid and hot. And the security woman, a woman, she came and she said to me in Turkish language that you should put up your mask or otherwise I'm going to fine you one million dollars. And like I was... <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of money, a million dollars for not wearing a mask? That is crazy. You know, yeah, because, you know, uh, maybe she had something wrong with the figures because most uh, here in, in Turkey, language is a big, ba big barrier. And sometimes it's difficult, you know, uh, to understand them because they get confused with the number of zeros in the figures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when she said that you will be fine, uh, uh, this much amount of dollars. So I said, now they are talking business and it's very serious. Yeah. So initially, like for six, seven months, now it's my eighth month here in Istanbul, but my six, seven months were initially the training months in Istanbul that I was uh, getting educated on SOPs and also being more familiar with this coronavirus because I got time to study it. To study it properly and more, uh, you know, I got deep connection, how we should avoid going out, what timings, what, what things that we like to do the most, we are not no more like allowed to do it now because for the betterment of ourselves and for the betterment of our own families. So on, on that line, how do you, when you're not working, what are some things that you do to entertain yourself or to pass the time? The past seven months just went by so quickly. I was busy and, you know, looking for a nice flat for myself where I wanted to live permanently. I was looking around for uh, different properties, uh, going to different offices. So, and then all of a sudden, uh, the temperature uh, dropped down. The weather became very, very harsh. I had to stay indoors. Uh, so uh, I, during all this time, I kept my mind positive. I kept on praying to God, but I did not stop working because I thought if I would sit at home, I would become very negative, depressed, and more uh, anxious. So, so when, when you were yes. 
uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, you had gotten a, a, a little sad and you were crying. So was the the downtime, the sadness, was that only in the beginning? Uh, or have you had those moments throughout the past year and a half where it's like, okay, today is just not a good day? Or have you been pretty upbeat in the past couple of months? As I mentioned to you, uh, it all started in March. So from March until July, my downtime, downtime was really very, very bad. But when I recovered myself and I took a decision that no matter what, because everybody was cautioning not to travel in these times and uh, um, everything was very different for me in, at the airport. The day I arrived at the uh, departures in Pakistan, everything was so different. And we were not allowed to carry our hand cabins. And when I entered the aeroplane, we were given uh, face shields and hand sanitizers. But I just did not want to think about anything. And I wanted to keep my mind occupied, to be honest. And I, I said, come watch me. It's like a do or die situation for me. Because if I sit at home, instead of corona, I will just pass because of the death anxiety or the fear inside my body. To overcome the, uh, that, I came here. And since I came here, not a minute has passed that I sat uh, freely. I'm so you keep yourself busy. Places. Yes. I kept my mind occupied. Yeah. Yes. and uh, uh, But now I have to go back to Pakistan uh, next week. And I'm quite, uh, like, quite, not very happy with the idea of going back, especially at the time when the corona again has spread very vastly. It's the third wave and which is more deadlier than the last wave. But um, what to do, I guess. Are you going back uh, for work or just because you're... Uh, no, not for work. My, As I said, my daughter, she has daughter, to yeah. appear for her A-level exams in Pakistan. So you have to be there for, for that, for her, for that. Or you just, you're going just to yes. be support for her. No, just for, uh, I do have some um, official tasks, but they can be delayed. Uh, but her exams, you know, is, is like uh, more important. And uh, the Pakistani government was saying that if any of the child does not want to appear this year in the exams, they can uh, appear in October, November. But their uh, AS, the first year uh, grades would be dissolved. Mm. So my yeah. child does not want to risk on that. And she says that it's better to appear this year. It's very strange. Cambridge has uh, uh, canceled exams on all the zones. But uh, I don't know why. In Pakistan, they are saying they have prepared the examination papers. They have prepared the invigilators. They have invested in the examination halls. So they will not um, take the decision back, which is very unfortunate. Do you think that after your daughter's exams that you bring her here as well? Or is the plan to just stay in, uh, in Pakistan? No, no, no. Definitely we would come back. As soon her, as her exams are over, we will just come back. Because uh, to be honest, uh, I'm just loving it over here. Well, that's a good thing. So af after this whole pandemic is, is concluded, what is the one thing that you're excited to be able to do again? Uh, 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 you know what? Uh, I'm very grateful to my God. Uh, I am 49 years old and there is nothing in my life that... Uh, I would say that uh, I miss doing it. I have like I have been to best schools, best college. Um, I studied from London. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I have got everything in life. So all I want is that after, after if the pandemic is over, I just want to go to my you know the house of faith where all the Muslims they they go and pray. The mosque. Hana Kaaba. Yes. So I would love to to go to Hana Kaaba and, uh, you know, bow my head in front of uh, that big, beautiful mosque where 
every year so many so many pilgrims would come to perform hajj and umrah but suddenly uh, unfortunately due to pandemic most of the people are not deprived they cannot go because the flights are cancelled things are not very friendly so yes after pandemic i would love to go over there have that that moment that connection is there is there one thing that you've learned about yourself during this time that you think can help other people a positivity the positivity is the key to everything just uh, whenever there is any negative thought coming in one's mind one should you know not think about that uh, negative factor and make oneself uh, strong and have faith and just stand up and follow the the sops that's the least one can do yes by sitting at home i think this thing will add more to the anxiety because we are basically social animals yeah. and uh, if we don't meet and greet each other we start becoming like a dead vegetable so it's more important <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, like here in Kofu when uh, Saturday and Sunday I spend at home and uh, these two days I I'm keeping myself busy in cooking and cleaning in in you know reading books watching the uh, Netflix and uh, I'm looking forward to a new Monday morning where ca- where mm-hmm. I can go out and see people around me not necessarily I should go to the mall yes I can go to the parks i can go to the seaside sit down and watch people see kids playing around so uh, uh, and appreciate god for everything for giving us this beautiful life and yes uh, people are being tested yes every uh, stage of life i think there is not a single soul who is not tested but the thing is that how we positively pass that exam Exactly. Uh, makes us a better person yes and give hope to the to the future to the future generation yes well i i definitely agree with that you know we have to stay positive and and that's the reason why i wanted to to start these quarantine qu- chronicles because i wanted people to be able to share their stories and share hope uh because we all go through different things and this has been a trying year and a half for all of us And so I definitely appreciate you coming on and giving me the time uh and sharing your story with us. Thank you once again, Shas. My pleasure and uh, I wish you all the best and keep on shining and keep on uh, interviewing people and do share with me uh anything that is interesting and gives hope. Uh please do share with me too. Thank you so much. Definitely, definitely. And I'll I'll uh, send you a message once I have uh, the video together if you want to take a look afterwards. Yeah, sure. I would love to. Sure. All right. Keep in touch. We'll do. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I would like to thank all of the wonderful and brave people who have trusted me with their stories. Although there are billions of people on this planet, the past year and a half has made many of us feel alone and isolated. My hope is that by sharing our tragedies and triumphs, we can begin to reconnect and understand that we are not in this alone and that we are all in this together. If you would like to be a part of the Quarantine Chronicles community and share your story, click on the interview scheduler in the link description below. Winston Churchill said, "If you're going through hell, keep going. We're not going to let this pandemic beat us. Let's keep pressing and keep progressing. Justice done."